Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I appreciate y'all stopping by. Today we're diving into the enchanting world of cottage core with 10 all new charming DIY decor ideas to bring the essence of spring into your space. All of these projects are super easy and will help transform any space into a cozy haven filled with rustic charm and natural beauty. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy the video. And if you've not yet hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a bit. Let's go ahead and jump into project number one. For this project, I went into Canva and AI generated this set of beautiful images that includes a fox, a wolf, mushrooms, and a few birds. I sized them to fit the frames that I was using and printed them off onto some cardstock. I also went ahead and generated this second set with the same type of images, only on a darker color scale and printed them out onto some cardstock, and this will be the set that I will be using for this project. Once I had the images printed and allowed them time for the ink to fully dry, I used some matte Mod Podge and went over the image with a small paintbrush to create brush strokes so that the image would resemble an oil painting. While putting the Mod Podge on the image, I tried to imagine how an artist would paint and the kind of brush strokes that they may use for each of the elements. For example, I used a stippling motion for the sky in the background, and then for the mushrooms, I used more of an actual brush stroke. I am not an artist, so I just kind of went with the lines of the image. After I had the whole image covered with the Mod Podge, I set it aside to fully dry and repeated the process on the remaining five images, then cut them out. Next, I used four of these gold 5x7 picture frames and two of these gold 8x10 picture frames, all from the Dollar Tree. I started by removing the backing and the glass from each of the frames, then used Waverly chalk paint in the color Fern to give them about three good coats, letting them fully dry between coats. Once the frames were completely dry, I used Waverly white wax and a wax brush and went over one of the frames, making sure to get the wax in all of the nooks and crannies and used a paper towel to wipe off the excess. I then repeated this step on the other five frames and allowed them to fully dry. Then to finish up this project, I placed the images into the frames, followed by the glass and then the backing, and this one is finished. I really love how this set turned out. I just wish the camera would pick up the brush strokes on the images because in person they do actually look painted. I think these would make a gorgeous gallery wall in a cozy reading room or a nursery. I will leave a link to both sets of images in the description box if you would like to print them out. Quickly moving on to project number two. For this project, I used one of the Hot Wheel tracks out of this two pack that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I started by using E6000 and applying it to one end of the track and snapping the blue connector piece in place. I then applied more E6000 to the other end of the track and connected it to the other end to create a circle. Next, I used two of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. I applied E6000 to the bottom and one side of one of the blocks and placed it inside the circle over where the two pieces come together and used a small clamp to hold it in place while the glue set up. I then repeated this step to attach the other tumbling tower block to the inside of the circle right in front of the first one. I then took four of these small wooden cubes from the Dollar Tree and used wood glue to attach two of the cubes together and wiped off the excess glue. I then repeated this step to attach the other two cubes together and set them aside to dry for a couple of hours. Next, I used one of these small wooden finials from this package that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and cut off the stem so that it was flush with the bottom. I also took another one of the wooden cubes from the Dollar Tree and used wood glue to attach it to the bottom of the finial and set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. After the wood glue had set up, I applied E6000 to the top of each of the wooden cube sets and attached them to the bottom of the circle to create the feet for the lantern. I then used E6000 to attach the finial to the top of the circle and set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. Once all the glue had set up, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color sandstone and gave the entire lantern several good coats, letting it fully dry between coats. 
To decorate this lantern, I used one of the bird's nests from this two pack and this bird from this three pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I placed the bird inside the nest and then took some of this reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and tucked it down around the bird inside the nest. I then took more of the reindeer moss and used hot glue to attach some to the inside of the lantern on both sides of the tumbling tower blocks. I found some leftover fern leaves in my floral stash and used hot glue to attach two leaves on each side of the blocks. I also used hot glue to attach the bird's nest inside the lantern on top of the blocks. Once I had the nest in place, I took some random greenery pieces from my leftover floral stash and arranged them in the moss to the right side of the nest using hot glue to secure the pieces in place, then finished up with a single dogwood flower. I then repeated this on the left side of the nest, finishing up with two dogwood flowers, and this project is finished. I absolutely love how this lantern turned out. I've seen many lanterns made with the Hot Wheel tracks, but I've never seen anyone make a circle one, so I thought I would give it a try. Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments below. I want to take a second to talk about today's video. It's part of the Craft Your Stash collab hosted by Liliana from Liliana DIY. I am super excited to be participating in this collab with these five incredibly talented crafters and I cannot wait to see what projects they have for everyone today. I will leave a link to their channels in the description box below as well as a link to the playlist so you can get even more inspiration once you finish my video. With that said, let's jump into project number three. For this project, I used one of these table decor pieces from the Dollar Tree and started by carefully popping the geode sign off the base. Next, I measured the dowel rods on the base and marked them at two and a half inches and used my miter shears to cut them down, then used a finger sander to sand them smooth. I also used this 10 inch wooden ring from this package of rings that I picked up on Amazon and I will have these linked below. I placed the ring down onto the base and marked where I needed to drill holes for the dowel rods. I then used a quarter inch drill bit and drilled two holes on the marks at the bottom of the wooden ring. Next, I applied wood glue to the top of both dowel rods and placed the wooden ring on top, making sure the dowel rods set flush with the bottom of the ring. I then took a damp paper towel and cleaned up any excess glue and set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. Once the glue had set up, I took some wood filler and filled in over the top of the dowels and allowed it to fully dry and sanded it smooth to give it a clean finished look. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the entire piece with one good coat so that everything was the same color. After that was dry, I used folk art chalk paint in the color sage and gave the entire piece two good coats. Once that was dry, I took some jute twine and used hot glue to attach it to one side of the ring about two and a half inches from the bottom and wrapped it around the ring eight times using hot glue as needed on the outside to secure it in place. After I had the jute secured in place on the ring, I applied hot glue down between the two sections of jute close to the right side and used a small clamp to pinch them together until the glue set up. I then repeated this step on the other side and again in the middle so that the jute was nice and tight. This is a personal preference, but I like the look of rustic jute, so I used a lighter to carefully burn off all of the fuzzies and to make it look rustic. To decorate this piece, I used two of the white and two of the purple stems of pumpus grass, three of these bunny tails, and three stems of this other dried grass all from this 100 piece set that I picked up on Amazon and I will have these linked in the description box below as well. I started by placing the tallest grass stem first in the center of the jute, then placed the smaller grass stems on either side close to the ring and trimmed up the stems as needed. Next, I placed one of the bunny tails on the right side between the two grass stems and then two bunny tails on the left side, again trimming up the stems as needed. Finally, I placed one of the purple pumpus grass stems between the middle grass stem and the bunny tails on both sides, then added one of the white pumpus grass stems to the purple stems, and this arrangement is finished. Y'all, I love how this turned out. 
I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it will be so easy to change out the dried flowers for each of the four seasons. Moving on to project number four. For this project, I used one of these 10 inch round mirrors from Walmart and removed the hanger from the back. I also used this 11 and a half inch wood round from the plus section at the Dollar Tree and used E6000 to adhere the mirror to the front side. I placed a few bottles of paint on top of the mirror to help hold it in place and set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. Once the glue had set up, I took some of this moss mixture that I made by mixing this package of brown floral moss and this reindeer moss both from the Dollar Tree along with this package of mixed mosses as well as some of this green moss that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby all together and used hot glue to attach it around the outside edge of the mirror and wood round making sure to cover up all of the visible wood and the gold frame of the mirror. After I had the edges completely covered, I took some scissors and trimmed up the moss so that it had the shape of the mirror and was a little more tidy. Next, I took the small silicone mushroom mold that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used hot glue to fill the mold, making sure to gently tap out all of the air bubbles once I had the mold filled with the hot glue. I repeated this step until I had all three mushrooms in the mold filled and set it aside to let the glue fully cool down. Once the glue had set up, it turned this milky white color, and that's how I knew it was cool enough to carefully pop the mushrooms out of the mold. I did overfill the molds just a little, so I took some detailed scissors and cut off any excess glue. Since I wasn't sure how many mushrooms I needed, I went ahead and filled the mold twice so that I would have two of each mushroom. I used Waverly chalk paint and the colored plaster to paint the stems of all of the mushrooms. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson to paint all of the mushroom caps. Finally, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the dots on the mushroom caps. Once the mushrooms were painted and dry, I used hot glue to attach two of the mushrooms on the bottom right side of the mirror nestled down into the moss. I then used hot glue to attach three more of the mushrooms on the bottom left side of the mirror again making sure they were nestled down into the moss. Then to finish up this project, I took this sawtooth hanger that I had in my stash and used hot glue to temporarily attach it to the back of the mirror at the top, then used these small screws to secure it permanently in place, and this one is finished. I think this turned out really cute. I do, however, wish the mushrooms were a bit bigger and that I had some shelf mushrooms to add, but overall, I'm happy with the way it turned out. I think it's going to be perfect on my bookshelf, and it's definitely giving fairy garden vibes. Okay, on to project number five. For this project, I used three of these 5x5 five five picture frames from the Dollar Tree and started by removing the glass and the paper from the frames. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the frames with a couple good coats. Next, I used three of these butterfly stickers from the sticker pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I wanted the butterfly to look a little more realistic, so I took some small detailed scissors and cut off the white area around the head of the butterfly, including the antenna. I then repeated this step to remove the antenna and the white pieces from the other two butterflies as well. After thoroughly cleaning the glass from the frames, I peeled the backing off of one of the butterflies and placed it down in the middle of one of the pieces of glass. Next, I cut off two black bristles from an old paintbrush and used them as the new antenna for the butterfly, placing them down behind the sticker at the top of its head. Once I had both antenna pieces in place, I placed the other piece of glass on top and slid the two pieces back into the frame and this one is finished. I then repeated this step to add the other two butterflies to the other two frames and this project is finished. I think these turned out really cute. I love the simplicity of them and the pop of color that the butterfly gives to these pieces. Again, these would be super cute on a bookshelf or even on a tiered tray. Moving on to project number six. For this project, I used this handmade butterfly shadow box that I picked up at a thrift store and started by removing the hanger from the back and the backing from the frame. Once I had the backing off, I cleaned up the frame and taped around the edges of the glass and used Waverly chalk paint in the color lavender to paint the entire frame with a couple good coats. 
Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster along with a small coarse paintbrush to heavily dry brush the backing, making sure to be careful not to break the butterflies or any of the dried florals. The little white flowers were really discolored, so I decided to remove them from the stems and replace them with one of these cream colored daisies and two of these blush colored daisies all from the Dollar Tree. I placed the cream colored daisy on the stem in the middle where I removed the white flower and then placed one of the blush colored daisies at the top and the other at the bottom on the stems that the white flowers were originally on. Then to finish up this project, I placed the backing back in the frame and put the screws back in place and that's it for this quick little thrift flip. It really is amazing at such a huge difference just a couple coats of paint can make on an older item that you may find at a thrift store. I really, really love this one, but my sister's already called dibs on it. Next up, project number seven. For this project, I used this wooden mushroom that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and started by using Waverly chalk paint in the color sandstone to paint the stem, sides, and back with two good coats. Next, I applied an even layer of matte Mod Podge to the cap of the mushroom on the front side and set it aside to fully dry. Once the Mod Podge was completely dry, I took this piece of scrapbook paper from this paper pack that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and placed it down on the cap of the mushroom and placed a piece of parchment paper on top. I then took my mini heat press on high heat and went over the top of the mushroom cap to reactivate the Mod Podge and adhere the paper to the mushroom. Next, I flipped the mushroom over and used a sharp utility knife to cut off most of the excess paper. After I had most of the paper removed, I took a finger sander and sanded around the edges to give the mushroom a nice finished look. Then I used some of this moss mixture from a previous project and used hot glue to attach a patch of moss to the right side, very top, and bottom left side of the mushroom cap. Once I had the moss fully attached to the mushroom, I took some scissors and trimmed up the moss so that it was a little bit cleaner. I decided I wasn't really happy with the way that it looked at this point, so I went ahead and added some of the light green puffy moss from the mix on top of the moss that I had already added to the mushroom cap. Next, I used a dab of hot glue to attach some jute twine to the back of the mushroom right under the cap and wrapped it around the stem twice and used hot glue to secure the other end in place. I then made a simple shoestring bow using the same jute and used hot glue to attach it to the stem of the mushroom right underneath the cap and trimmed up the tails. Then to finish up this project, I used this blue butterfly from this two pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used hot glue to attach it to the right side of the mushroom on top of the moss and this one is finished. I absolutely love how this mushroom shelf sitter turned out. I wish I had been able to find more of these wooden mushrooms so that I could have created a few more with different colored caps. On to project number eight. For this project, I used this small wooden shadow box from Michaels and started by removing the hangers from the back and used Waverly chalk paint in the color pink cloud to paint just the inside of the box. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color sandstone to paint the outside edges and back of the box. I then went outside in my yard and found this piece of a tree limb and used hot glue to attach it to the back of the frame on the left side. Then I took some more of this moss mixture and used hot glue to attach it around the base of the tree limb as well as the rest of the bottom lip of the box. I found this piece of moss that looks like tree bark, so I used hot glue to attach it to the box just to the right of the limb. I then decided I needed to add some moss to the fork in the limb and to the tops of each piece to cover up where it had been cut. I did go ahead and go back and trim up some of the moss so that it looked a little more clean. Next, I used one of these stems from this hops pick that I picked up at Walmart and used hot glue to attach it to the back of the box down behind the left side of the limb. I also used a stem off of this sedum pick that I also got at Walmart and used hot glue to attach it in the right corner of the box. I then took three of these mushrooms from this package that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and used Waverly chalk paint in the color sandstone to paint the stems and bottoms of the mushroom caps. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson to paint the top of the mushroom caps. 
Once that was dry, I used Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster and the end of a small paintbrush to add the dots on top of the mushrooms. Once the paint was dry, I removed the mushrooms from the wire stems and used hot glue to attach the largest mushroom to the bottom of the shadow box. I then took one of the small mushrooms and cut the stem a bit shorter and used hot glue to attach it to the bottom of the box just a little bit out in front of the larger mushroom, followed by the other small mushroom beside it. Then to finish up this project, I used the last little butterfly from this pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and removed the wire stem and used hot glue to attach it to the end of the limb that was sticking out of the frame and this one is finished. I think this turned out super cute. I love all of the little elements in this shadow box and I think it would be perfect on a tiered tray or as a space filler on a shelf. Let's go ahead and jump into project number nine. For this project, I used two of these five by seven canvases from the Dollar Tree and started by using a flathead screwdriver and some pliers to carefully remove the canvases from the frame. I wanted to keep the staples in the corners, so I took a hammer and made sure that they were recessed into the wood. I then took a finger sander and sanded both frames. After that was done, I used wood glue to attach the two frames together to form the shape of a roof and used clamps to hold them together and set them aside to dry for a couple of hours. Once the glue was dry, I used Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster to paint the roof. Next, I used apple barrel paint in the color country gray and dry brushed the entire roof. After all the paint was dry, I took a small drill bit and drilled a hole in the side of the frame about three quarters of an inch from the edge and repeated this to add another hole on the other end. I then went ahead and repeated this step to drill two holes on the other side of the roof as well as a hole in the top of the roof in the middle. Next, I used this two pack of wall shells from the Dollar Tree and used Waverly chalk paint and the colored plaster to paint both sides of both shelves. I then used apple barrel paint in the color country gray and dry brushed both sides of both shelves just like I did with the roof. Once all the paint was dry, I used the two pieces of rope that came with the wall shelves and put a piece of scotch tape on each of the ends. I fed the ends of one of the ropes through one side of the roof and pulled them until the ends were even. I then fed the other rope through the holes on the other side of the roof, again making sure the ends were even. Next, I took one of the shelves and fed the rope on the right side of the roof through the holes on the right side of the shelf. I then fed the rope on the left side of the roof through the holes on the left side of the shelf. Once I had the ropes in place, I pulled the shelf down so that it was roughly six inches from the roof and tied a double knot in one of the pieces of rope to secure it in place. I then continued to tie double knots in each of the pieces of rope until I had all four tied to hold the shelf in place, making sure they were all roughly six inches from the top. Next, I placed the second shelf onto the ropes and measured it eight inches from the first shelf and again tied the rope pieces under the shelf in double knots to secure the shelf in place, making sure to keep it at eight inches on all four sides. After I had all the rope pieces secured in place, I cut off the excess. I used one of the silver rings that came with the shelves and used some excess rope to create the hanger by looping the rope through the ring and pulling the ends back through to secure it in place. I then taped the two ends together and fed the rope through the hole on the top of the roof, then cut the ends apart and secured it in a double knot and cut off the excess and this one is finished. I'm super happy with the way this hanging plant shelf turned out. I put some fake plants on it here just for display purposes, but I think if you had some lightweight live plants, it would work just as well. And last but certainly not least, project number 10. For this project, I used two of these metal lanterns that I picked up at the thrift store and started by cleaning them and removing all of the built up dirt and grime. Once they were dry, I took this moss mixture and used hot glue to attach it to one of the lanterns, starting at the very top, making sure to keep the handle free of moss so that it would still be able to move. I then worked my way around the top of the lantern and down the sides, making sure to keep the moss only on the frame and off of the glass and working latch. Here is how it looked once I had it completely covered. 
Once I had it covered, I took some scissors and trimmed up all of the moss to give the lantern back its shape and so that it was a little less chaotic and this one is finished. I then repeated the same steps to cover the other lantern. To add the finishing touch to this project, I took two of these LED battery operated candles and placed them inside the lanterns and this one is finished. These turned out so pretty. I love them even though the process was extremely messy, I feel like it was absolutely worth it. I think these would make a wonderful centerpiece for a wedding with a woodland or fairy tale theme. I do want to mention if you do recreate this project, please do not put real candles in the lanterns and only use the battery operated candles. And that's it for all of today's cottage core inspired spring decor DIYs. I hope you enjoyed watching and were inspired to create some of these projects for your own home. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I almost cannot pick just one favorite. I really do love how they all turned out, but if I had to, I'm going to have to say it's the Butterfly Shadow Box Thrift Flip, followed up by the Hot Wheels Track Lantern. Please don't forget to go check out the Craft Your Stash playlist. The link will be in the description box below as well as in the pinned comment. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up as it really does help me out here on YouTube, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a little while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. I'll see y'all next time.